This is a collection of masking methods for Godot 3. Godot 4 will have a few more methods, but I am only addressing the stable version of Godot with this collection. I did not invent these techniques, I simply collected them from around the internet and thought it would be helpful to have as many as I could find in one place. I tried to make sure that I referenced where all these techniques came from so that you can visit those content creators. In the future, I may do in-depth videos on how I implemented the techniques from an artist designer perspective. I'm not a professional video editor or YouTuber, so please forgive the video editing quality. Let's go over how to navigate the file. When you open the file, it should look a little something like this. Click on the animation player and in the animation list, you will see a series of animations I put together. If you click through these different animations, they will reveal the different sections that I have put together. You can play them directly in the editor and see what they are doing. You can see the nodes they're affecting and the parameters that they're changing. And when you want to click on a specific example, one of these uh, boxes here, you can choose the view that you want to go to, click on it, and you'll see that the color rect is in the way. Just change the visibility of that and you should be able to click on everything. And when you click on it, go over here on the right, click on material, and you will be able to see the various shader parameters. If you don't see exactly what I see, which you'll probably see something like this, all you have to do is click on shader material, which will pop that open a little more, then click on shader param, and you'll see the parameters of the shader, and you can start playing with them and manipulating them. If you want to see the code, click on the, co the code entry there, and you will see the shader code. I am not a uh, shader code expert. I get my way through it through trial and error. So I would suggest if you're wanting to learn shader code to seek out the various tutorials that are out there. And there are some very good ones out there on YouTube. And elsewhere, I should say. So as you click around, you can ch check out the material, change the, the various parameters. And the sprite texture mask works very similar to the rectangle and round, except you drag in a texture over here. And if you want that texture to repeat, you find it in your assets folder. You go to import and you select repeat enabled. When you re-import it, you'll see that you can have a repeating texture. And this texture operates as a mask where the solid white will reveal what's underneath and anything transparent will hide it. If you don't want re repeating, you just re-import with it disabled. The transition gradient shader here is extremely powerful. It is how I accomplished the intro animation where you take images and through using a version of that image with a black and white gradient, you can tell the shader what to reveal when through manipulating the value, the cutoff value. So if I go back here, in this case, the color rect is in the way again. So you click on that and in the material you can see how changing the cutout value affects what is revealed. And how it's determining the pattern is through this mask texture, which is black and white. And if you look at it here, you can see how not only do I have it going black to white across the screen, I also have the tiles being various grayscale coloring. 
And that's how the shader determines what to show. And in the shader, if you just play with the parameters, you can see how it'll move back and forth. And GD Quest is where I learned about this shader. If you go to their video here, they give a full tutorial on how to build it, how to make it, and what the code and everything means. So now I'll talk about Light 2D. There are a ton of tutorials out there, so I'm not going to go into extreme depth about it. But in Light 2D, if you have a light, and in our example here, I have a light over this rectangle, and it is masking this texture. So this texture is set the light mass to 10, and the light is call mask is also set to 10. So that's how it's affecting each other. So as you move around, you can see that the solid white part of the texture is what is revealing. And the transparent part of the texture is what is hiding. So if you go too far, you'll see the texture underneath. If you try to use multiple lights on the same objects, you will end up getting some funky results. It looks as though it will only operate when they overlap. But then if they completely go outside the bounds of the texture, you're going to get some breakage. And it essentially means that for single objects, you're limited to a single light. If you try to have multiple lights affecting one node, you will get uh, bizarre results. So let's get rid of that. And we'll come down here to light as a texture. Down here, I have light as a texture, but you could consider it light as projection. Essentially, there is this gradient being projected onto this text. So I just have plain white text, and when the light hits it, it reveals its um, gradient texture. Now this should work for anything, so let's give this a shot. I'm going to drag in this Godot logo, and at the moment, the light shouldn't affect it, because it's not on the same call mask. So this light is set to five. So we need to change this to five. And now you can see the same effect taking place where wherever it is, the color, and it could be an image, it could be whatever, will be masked, quote unquote, by the solid white image that is on your screen. Now it does create this funky border around the items and I don't know what that is or why that's there. So um, used to varying results. Let's switch over to step three here and we can take a look at Another use of Light2D, except in this case, we are using an entire viewport as a mask. For a detailed explanation as to what's happening here, check out Quantum Code's YouTube channel. This is where I learned about it, and there is a long detailed video about how to put it together. So I will give you the nutshell summary of it. I need to hide the color rect again. Now I click on here and you will see this is a light 2D. You can see it masking the blue behind there. Now this light 2D has a texture, which is a viewport. It is this viewport here, viewport. Now I'm canceling because it's already selected. Now this viewport, which is right here, contains the three Godot logos. And I'm animating them down here. So you can see 
I make them visible and invisible and slide them around. So you can see in two places that here's the viewport, here's the items, here's the texture over here on the right of what's being animated around. And you'll see it's upside down uh, because for some reason viewports are rendered upside down in Godot. So that's what this V flip option is on for because once it's actually rendered in the screen, you see it uh, right side up. So that is a light 2D in mask mode using a viewport as a texture. Now for that to work, and as I learned from the tutorial, you need to have the viewport rendered somewhere on the screen. And in this case, I have this sprite viewport renderer. Now that's down here. Oops, the color rect got in the way again. When you mess around with the file, you may even want to just get rid of it. But this is the render of the, the viewport textures. Now I have, just for the sake of it being visible, I have a modulate on it. You can turn that off and just see the white. And now you'll see things move around. But what this allows you to do, one, it's necessary for the light 2D mask to reveal the sprite. If you don't have that visible, it doesn't update. I don't know why, uh, just according to the, tutor the tutorial, it's just this thing that you have to do. So once you turn it back on, it updates and it works. But what that also allows you to do is you can render a viewport in a sprite or a texture or whatever you can allows you to render a texture and you can apply shaders to that. So if you had an entire scene that you wanted to apply a special mask to, in this case, I just have the basic wipe mask on it. I'm going to turn it black again for visibility. But you can see the values here, I can mask an entire viewport. And a viewport can hold entire scenes. It doesn't just have to be the nodes. You can build an entire scene and put it in a viewport. So this is yet another way to mask multiple items at once. So applying a shader to a render on a sprite or a texture is a way to have one mask that applies to a whole lot of things. The light using um, the light 2D using a viewport as a mask allows the mask to contain a whole bunch of things. So you can have a fully animated mask. You could do all kinds of wild stuff with it. So it was a really interesting and cool technique and quantum code. The video for his YouTube is right here at the bottom. All right, let's move over to control nodes. Now this is probably the easiest way to crop and mask something. So if we open over here, open up the control nodes have it inside this control node here. So you can move it around, manipulate it. It is a rectangle. I don't think you can change. You're stuck with a rectangular shape of some kind. So if you move the lower right corner around, you can mask anything inside of it. And that works through the clip content option over here on the right. You check that on or off to clip the content. Now, if you move the left or top, it changes the positional data. So everything inside will move along with it. So just be aware of that. 
This is handy for masking uh, many children because you can have a whole bunch of stuff inside the control. You can play around, move it, animate it, do whatever with it, and you get a nice, neat, rectangular mask. This could be something good for simple health bars that have animations or something. Very handy, very easy. I think if you rotate it, you'll end up getting kind of some funky results. So you're kind of stuck with a rectangular shape, even if you rotate it. So there are limits. Polygon 2D. You just need to draw out a polygon. So we can do that right here. So draw out your polygon. You'll see it pops in as white. And all you need to do is drop your mask. I can open up the right spot. Drop in your texture mask and you will see it inside the polygon. And then you can modify it as needed. And you may need to manipulate these values to shift it around inside your polygon to make it fit. Special shout out to Vizleaf on Twitter for the projection surface slash gradient texture method and to gold.s questions on Reddit for the rectangular and round masking method. I'm sometimes streaming art and game development on Twitch as Mighty Mocha Games. If you ever want to stop by, I'm happy to answer questions or just say hey. I hope this collection is useful, helpful, and I can make more in-depth tutorials for some of these items if people have an interest. So let me know in the comments if that's something you'd like, and thanks for watching.